newer models are now focused on authentic leadership, you know, really, and authentic leadership is about self-awareness and, you know, really understanding how your behavior, um, how your behavior is interpreted by other people, you know, taking a step back and thinking in terms of, you know, what's the best way to, to, to increase performance for yourself and for your teams. And as entrepreneurs, because as entrepreneurs, I think it's also important for us to be really dialed into the importance of taking care of ourselves as a, as a business strategy. Welcome to Reward, the podcast of The Trust. We are the show specifically for women entrepreneurs who want to build businesses into the multi-million dollar revenues and beyond, but especially because we know the reward is much greater than that. I'm Allie Brown, and I'm excited to introduce you to these diverse female leaders from a variety of industries, women making huge impact and who are unwilling to settle for the status quo. On the web, visit jointhetrust.org to learn more about our modern community for forward-thinking seven- and eight-figure women entrepreneurs. That's jointhetrust.org. See you there. Now, get ready to enjoy this episode's powerful conversation. Dean, where are you today? I'm actually in Milford, Connecticut today. Okay, so you're, are you at your home? Yeah. It's a different I'm background. Did you mix it up for me? I did. I wanted to make sure that my background was nice and clean <laughs> for the for the podcast. It is. I know? like it. <laughs> That's why I was, I was like, "Well, where is she? Is she on the road?" Um, it's it's great to be talking with you, even though you know I've gotten to know you pretty well through the trust and the work that we've done together. It. I love these interviews because I get to go deep and really get to know more about you know everyone who I think I know in the trust, but it's a whole different conversation usually. So. Um, I would love you to first give a snapshot, I'd say, of your business today. And if anything you'd like to share about kind of who you are and what you do, and and then maybe we'll take it back after that kind of to your background. Sure. Thanks. So I'm excited to be here. So thank you for having me. Um, so my business is called JKA Solutions. We Our primary focus is to connect local and diverse suppliers to opportunities with government agencies and large corporations. We've been in business for, I've been in business personally for over four decades. And so this, this particular company has been in business for nearly two decades. And so we work with, you know, minority and women entrepreneurs and the primary focus is really helping them make connections. We also work with corporate clients and we do the same thing in reverse. We help corporate clients identify qualified um, diverse businesses for to help them meet their objectives. Mm -hmm. Let's start with the corporate gene and, and your background. Mm -hmm. And when you, you know, came out of the gates ready to roar in the corporate world, how did this all start? Yeah. You know, I always dreamt about being in business and, you know, and I thought when I, when I got out of school that it was, you know, being in a corporation and having, you know, the corner office and the fancy suits and all of that stuff. So when I got out of school, I went to work for a company called Thompson Financial Services in their marketing department. And I, and I had all the glitz and glamour that you could imagine in a good corporate job. Did you, you have know, a corner back office? Then, back in, I had a corner Reserves office. Parking. It was the 80s. <laughs> yeah, you know, all that good stuff. All that good stuff. Shoulder pads. Um, yeah, big shoulder pads. <laughs> Yeah, that was a thing, really big thing back then. If you think about, I mean, I'm dating myself, but people used to smoke in their offices. Oh my god. Imagine. <laughs> it's yeah. it's so funny to even think of that now, but it was it was my first job even the 90s, my boss smoked in her office. Merrily, she'd come in with this big fur coat. She's like, "Here, take my coat." <laughs> yeah. Like yeah, my boss used to do the same thing. I remember sitting there like my eyes just tearing. You know, like, <laughs> "Wow, what is it with the cigarettes?" And you know, it actually brings you back to like how, you know, because back then I would have never imagined a time when people didn't smoke in their offices. And look, look at where we I are. I know, I know. So here you are dealing with the smoke, but you had a corner office. Yeah. You had it all going on. Yeah. I had it all going on. But, you know, my my parents are entrepreneurs. My dad start had started this security guard company and he was really struggling. So my response to that was, let me help you. Um, because my background is in marketing and communications. Let me help you. And I started going in on the weekends 
And, you know, as difficult as, as I saw his journey, um, I liked a lot of the things about entrepreneurship, the creativity. Um, I think even the struggle was appealing to me. Like it was like a, like a puzzle, you know, this is, this, there's something here that we need to um, work on and fix. And the freedom that came with, you know, in, in a corporate job, there's so many layers of, you know, to get anything done. Whereas, you know, back then, you know, it was just my dad and I, small family business. So it was like, hey, what do you think about this? And, you know, we would try it and do it. And so I, so I ended up leaving, leaving my corporate job to work full time in my dad's um, business. And um, it was a security guard company. And, you know, the short story is, you know, I, that's, that's how I became interested and, and learned about supplier diversity. And so using supplier diversity as a marketing tool, we, we got out of struggle. Mm. We were able to grow that business to a multi eight figure business. We had over 500 employees. And when I say we were in struggle, we, we struggled. Um, there was a point in time when, you know, I remember sitting around at the family dinner table thinking about, wow, should, should we close this? Is this really a good idea? And kind of once we crack the code in terms of how to leverage, you know, supplier diversity programs, how to do business with government agencies, how to work with corporate clients, it changed our lives. Mm. So same business, different approach, different ways of getting in the door, different ways of presenting themselves. You know, what I find with a lot of entrepreneurs, especially, you know, in our community is that people get into entrepreneurship for different reasons. You know, so my parents, as an example, they were immigrants, five, you know, five with five kids. There's no job that can sustain that. And so my, my parents got into, you know, business out of necessity. And, you know, sometimes you can be really good at something. You can have a great idea, but the foundation around, well, what needs to happen? How do you do the marketing? Um, and, and, you know, how do you apply for financing? How do you build out a business? It's not there. It's something mm -hmm. that we learned, quite frankly, on the job. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's where you became interested in the diversity programs, the supplier diversity, the, the corporate, different ways of getting in the door. Yeah. And the different ways of getting in the door, um, you know, and just, just for people who may not be familiar with what is supplier diversity programs and how do they work, you know, government agencies and corporations have what they call supplier diversity programs, which is an, an attempt at opening opportunities for groups that have traditionally not had opportunities to do business. So in the corporate world, they're often called supplier diversity programs or business diversity programs where the corporations will be intentional about attracting more women-owned businesses, attracting more minority-owned businesses, and really widening the lens and looking at how they're doing business so that they can better communicate with and better work with um, small businesses. Because as you know, small businesses do not work the same as large corporations. In the government space, many states and federal agencies have earmarked a percentage. Like um, I do a lot of business in New York City and New York City, as an example, New York City, New York State, um, all, a lot of the municipalities there have earmarked 30% of all of their contracts mm. for minority women, service disabled veterans. So it can be a very lucrative game changer for a small business that's looking to scale in those um, areas. Yeah. And you've, you've really opened our eyes within the trust. You know, it started with some conversations um, and just me getting to know you as well when, when you were a client of mine. And and I, I, if you remember, we'd, I'd always be on the call and be like, really? I'd be like, oh, that's so interesting. Because you'd be sharing the, the size of this market, actually. And for those of us who ran screaming from corporate, even the word corporate is terrifying, right? We don't go, oh, gosh, I'd never want to work with corporate again. Those people, right? <laughs> like those, those mm. types of companies. Mm. And you really enlightened us to the, the, the ways that uh, businesses could make small shifts to work with that market. And here, here were the payoffs, right? Huge contracts, um, steady work, right? There's, there's some, and you'll probably go into more of these. 
um, you know, and th- there's realities of it too, that it, it could be, it's a slower process. You have to really get your ducks in a row before you go in there. Do you want to talk a bit? Uh, so women listening can understand, like, maybe this is something I want to think about. So I can talk about this all day. I encourage all women and any entrepreneur to think about this because at the, at the end of the day, a corporation in my mind, you know, a lot of, a lot of my clients will say, Oh, I can never work with corporate. But what is a corporation? It's a collection of people, right? And, you know, people have varying needs, whether it's, you know, what am I going to have for lunch or professional development? And corporations and government agencies are sometimes the largest buyers of goods and services in the United States. So for any entrepreneur that's thinking about, well, how do I scale my business? And, you know, how do I add an additional vertical? I encourage people to think about it. I, the things that I love about corporate, the things that I love about working with government agencies is the consistency. You know, I, I remember when I first started my consulting practice, I had the option, I, you know, of, of training and coaching individuals. And at that time, when I first started, I was like, okay, I, you know, I had my little calculator. I was like, how many people would I need to see in order to hit my just break even targets? And that was a lot of work. And again, dating myself, but, you know, it was almost like pre-internet, like you had to get on the phone, you had to, you know, meet clients in person. And so one of the shifts I made was like, wow, I wonder if I can serve these people Mm -hmm. in the same way through a corporate and government um, contract. And it's been a game changer for me. I will tell you, uh, and I tell people this all the time, my first corporate client was a $30,000 gig. And I was more than happy to have it. It was, it was, you know, 30% of a, of a larger contract, but there was where I got the experience that I needed. Um, and I was no longer chasing all of these other, you know, for me to make $30,000 as a, as a coach, I would have had to see, I would have had to see a lot of people Right. where in one, you know, interaction, I knew who my client was and, you know, I had the terms and fast forward to here where we are today. Um, that one opportunity led to so many others. Yeah. You've mentioned that there are many themes and programs trending in corporate now as well that align with a lot of women's businesses. So for example, wellness, uh, can you give some specific examples maybe on how, you know, there are opportunities in that space in corporate? Cause it's one that I know a lot of women can relate to in their types of business. Yeah, you know, it's interesting, but statistics are now reflecting, you know, if you think about the old corporate model, the old corporate models were really focused around work harder to increase peak performance. And now there are so many studies and so many statistics that reflect that that is not the way to achieve success. So if you think about all the big tech companies, if you think about pretty much all large corporations that have made a significant investment in their people, have even a chief wellness officer. That's a title now. And, you know, and in terms of how people invest in their employees, it's everything from retreats, access to, you know, qualified, um, you know, qualified professionals, like, you know, performance coaches, trainers, therapists, um, in addition to all the other things that people are, that people who are focused on wellness are, are looking at, which could be, a personal trainer, <laughs> you know, all the things that people would think, oh, if I did that, if I, if I'm a trainer, as an example, there's no room for me in corporate. And that's just not true. Um, right now, again, co- forward thinking corporations are very tuned into the importance of providing their employees with resources so that they can maintain their health and wellness. Yeah. And you mentioned something to me as well. You said, you know, there, there is an increased focus on alternate paths to leadership. Talk about that. Yeah. Well, again, I think, you know, we are just seeing so much chaos and turmoil in the world. You know, again, old models is is if it's not working, again, push that, um, you know, push that kind of stone up the hill. And newer models are now focused on authentic leadership. You know, really, and authentic leadership is about self-awareness and, you know, really understanding how your behavior um, how your behavior is interpreted by other people. 
you know, taking a step back and thinking in terms of, you know, what's the best way to, to, to increase performance for yourself and for your teams. And so we know for a fact that, again, old models around health and wellness are not working. In fact, we're seeing an increase of women um, who are, I think this is the first time in, I can't even tell, the, the first time in a very long time that the age, um, life expectancy of women have declined, mm -hmm. you know? Um, I think some of the statistics I know that, you know, 65% of women over 50 are reporting having, you know, an ongoing health issue. I saw a statistic that reflected that, you know, 20% of women, um, you know, over 20 are having, you know, challenges. So as employers, people have to think about this. And as entrepreneurs, and I just want to highlight this for, for us, because as entrepreneurs, I think it's also important for us to be really dialed into the importance of taking care of ourselves as a, as a business strategy. You know, we always, I, I, and I've done this and I know a lot of clients who do this, but the minute you start investing in, you know, your mental health, your physical health, your well-being, you will see an automatic correlation in your business. Yeah, it's true. We talk about this a lot in the trust as well. And it, you know, it's one of those soft topics I kind of think of, right, that, you know, it it's kind of like, sometimes I admit, like, if it feels so cliche to talk about, it. let's talk about, you know, work-life balance or taking care of ourselves or self-care. And I'm telling you, though, the older we get, this is the thing. It is absolutely the thing because it powers up everything else we do. It powers up our ideas. It powers up our productivity. It powers up how creative we are. It, it powers up everything else. And I think, you know, in, in my 30s, I could push through things. You know, I could, I could push the boulder up the hill. I'd figure it out. I'd work the long days. And now I, 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 I can't, like literally, and I'm okay saying that, like, I just can't. I don't have that capacity. Um, and there's so many other things I'm interested in besides, you know, my work. And I think your life broadens as well. And that brings this richness then to the focus you have on your work and the things that you're doing outside. And so, you know, I'm, I'm relating it to an aging thing, but I know, I, I think a lot of women, even this younger, the younger generations now, it's something they really care about. They won't take jobs now that will not allow them this kind of balance. You've heard that as, as well. And I'm sure that's, that's what I'm reading. I mean, you probably hear it in corporate also. Well, again, I think, you know, if I had to go back and coach my 30 year old self, I would have, I would have immediately said your, your priority needs to be your health and wellness. And I know, you know, my 30 year old self would have kind of fought that, like, wait a minute, ha, you know, ha, I need ha. to put in more hours, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I need to put in more hours. I need to be visible to my boss so they, they know I'm working. And we know now that that is, that is actually having a detrimental effect on women. It's having a detrimental effect on entrepreneurs and it's not sustainable. You know, I, I can't even remember the book that I was reading this weekend where they were just talking about the importance of really tuning in to our inner wisdom, because they said like the most complex things, if you think about the most complex things in the world, like just the fact that, you know, the sun shines every day, just imagine what has to go into that because it's complicated, but there's, it's, it's, it's done with ease. It happens every day and we don't have to do anything for it. Same thing with, you know, the complexity of our bodies. Every day, our body is working for us without us having to do anything for it. And so when you think about the capacity of our brain to be able to connect, and I think we've all experienced that time when you've just said, you know what, I'm really going to focus on this. I'm going to think about it. I'm going to dial in. It, it kind of just happens. And, and I don't mean to simplify it in that way, but I just want to, when we talk about health and wellness, it's about dialing inward. And really aligning with who you are, what your purpose is. And so when I think when you're aligned with who you are and what your purpose is, it is, it just becomes intuitive to take care of yourself because you have such a deep respect for this vehicle, which is the tool that allows you to create. It allows you to connect. And I think again, for entrepreneurs and, you know, even, you know, I speak to a lot of women in corporate um, jobs, that sometimes we forget that and we think it's about something else. And, and it's just not. 
Mm. You've been on a bit of a journey yourself over the last few years, haven't you? Um, you know, when, yeah. when I met you, you weren't talking about a lot about, you know, wellness or taking care of yourself. And it, it seems to be a big theme now. Do you want to share a bit? You know, uh, yeah, absolutely. I have um, struggled. I will tell you, I, I think probably in 2014, I ended up taking the IIN nutrition. You know, I thought, oh, I'm just going to quit my job and, you know, quit my business and I'll be a health coach. And what that actually did for me is it really raised my awareness about the importance of wellness and, and kind of the full circle, your mental, your physical, your spiritual, your family. It's all connected to make you the person that you need to be to show up every day. And I think, you know, I would say probably over the past 10 years, it's almost like resisting your training, you know, because I am wired, you know, for, you know, go, go, go. Let's, let's, let's get that money. Let's, you know, get more clients. And as I am maturing and I'm becoming a better business person, it's related directly to the ability to pause and almost kind of respect myself enough to say, I'm not going to run myself into the ground. Mm. I am going to be intentional about, you know, making time to take care of myself. And I will be honest with you, I still struggle with it. Um, and I see, you know, a lot of entrepreneurs and, and women, you know, women that I'm working with in the corporate space really struggling with it as well. And so I, I am aiming, you know, when I think about my legacy work and what I'm going to do with, you know, business that I have and my, my coaching, I feel like this is a key area that if people can focus on it and trust the process, that everything that they're thinking about will happen. You know, when you think about too, like, you know, I don't mind sharing that I'm going to be 60 years old this year. <laughs> and so interestingly, you know, it's, well, women should be retiring and all these things should be happening. And so there's a lot of focus on financial, you know, what do you need to retire? I could have a million dollars in the bank. If I got sick, that's over. Okay. A million dollars does not even begin to cover the expense of a chronic illness. And so now more than ever, I am very focused on taking care of myself and supporting other women in that same journey because we're focused on, I, I can easily save the money, but if I'm doing it at the expense of my health, it's, it's just not, it's not adding up. It's not making sense. Yeah. Do you think that women are getting it? You think they're finally getting it? I think there's a lot in our space, you know, when we talk to, you know, uh, that's one of the reasons why I love the trust. I love a lot of the women that, you know, that we have had the privilege of, of, of you know, sharing time with, where there's an awareness, um, because I think we've been supporting each other in the, those conversations. Like, we'll, we'll pull each other in and say, hey, wait a minute, are you okay? Um, or you're working too hard? Or how is the kids? You know, there's that sisterhood there. Um, but outside of of the trust, in other circles, I'll, I'll be honest, I, I don't see that. I still see a lot of people really focused on, you know, go, go, go. And, you know, guess, you know, a lot of women my age are talking about, you know, well, where's your retirement money? Where are you going to live? And at the expense of their health mm. and, and, and wellness, or even as you're building a business, you know, we had this conversation where we had to get to the million dollar mark and now we want to go to the $5 million mark and maybe the $10 million mark. And the, the question becomes at what expense, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. because you can have the money, but again, you know, with one and a chronic illness, by the way, can show up for any of us. Um, you know, there are statistics that reflect that when we are chronically stressed, illnesses like, you know, autoimmune disease shows up, lupus, MS, other things, that for some people, they can manage it fine. And other people, that's it. Yeah. You know, they can no longer work. Yeah. One of the things that surprised me, maybe it shouldn't have, about the women in the trust that we naturally attract is, I'd say the majority of them are very holistic in how they view their business and mission as part of their lives, though. they they The majority of them have very um, well-rounded lives where you know, they do have the self-care and there's a focus on wellness and, you know, not all, but like most of them. Um, so that's been just so 
it, it's also been such a process for me to take in everyone in that group and how there's not one right way to do it, but everyone's kind of figuring out their own way. And we are the generations figuring out these new ways of working in a different way than the old masculine model, right? We take a little of that, but then we do things in a much different, more holistic way. And that's been fascinating. And then, you know, when I was getting to know you and then you brought in this whole corporate idea, that was a game changer, I think, for so many of them as well in seeing how, you know, for many of them may, uh, I won't say many, but like some, you know, have some business models that they know may not be sustainable. Let's say the internet changes, something changes in the algorithm that their ads don't work. You know, the ones who are in precarious kind of places with with marketing and things, they need to have other options ready. That's why I love the corporate idea. We're like, well, let's explore this. Could you start working for in, in becoming a, a supplier to corporate? Like just thinking in this much more holistic way than we have been trained in traditional business. That's where I'm trying to go with this. Um, looking at things much more from a bird's eye perspective and like, here's who I want to be. Here's the life I want to create. Here's the business I've created, but what are the opportunities? How can I make this a more well-rounded experience for myself that is more financially prof profitable? Just, just when I see us unlocking their thinking in any place, it's just so rewarding in that room to see how they shift. And and fun, it may seem funny to bring the corporate conversation into that, but it is an important way of getting them thinking differently and out of the, it's this is how you do it way, right? Because that's how we learn. Oh, this is how you do it. Yeah. There's There's so many ways to do this. That's the exciting thing. There's so many ways to do it. And quite frankly, you know, it's not for everyone. Because, you know, there, there's a lot to be said, you know, when I go back to my 30, you know, my $30,000 example, we'll learn what I've learned from a lot of, you know, women that they're in the coaching part. There's a way to get the $30,000 easier than, than what I did from a corporate perspective. But that client that I, I actually got that client probably in 2014, I'm still working with them. Okay. <laughs> and it's a relationship that continues to grow and evolve. And so it has allowed me to really to 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 create a business and a lifestyle that, you know, that is is amazing. And the other thing I think that's important for, you know, for women to think about is if especially a lot of the entrepreneurs who want to have a greater impact, when you look at who works in a corporation, who works for the government, it's people. And so your impact can be magnified within a corporation. Um, you know, or within a government agency that you, so, so that you can still do what, what it is that you love. The other thing that I, that I love about the corporate and, and government model is the, when I talk to people, because sometimes people are like, Oh, I could never do that. The, th these, the way that these contracts are structured, it's, it's about building, um, a team. And so it's not that you as a, as a, as a businesswoman or an entrepreneur need to change. You need to build a team. And so a lot of the models that I see out there for, for a, a whole variety of things, um, you can duplicate that. And, and the, one of the things that I am most proud of as, 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 as an entrepreneur is the ability to share it with another business. Um, I have a team of subcontractors. I am, you know, I am blessed to have, you know, great employees and these are things that, that, again, working in these environments have been able to, um, you know, that, that I've been able to accomplish in working in these environments. Yeah. I want to uh, talk about the Corporate Client Collective for a minute because uh, I should have probably mentioned it right off the bat that um, it's something we now offer as part of the trust. It's an add-on track for women who are in the trust and then would like to then now learn how to um, obtain and work with corporate clients. Um, do you want to talk a bit about that? And and uh, I'm excited because we're going to see some of our members coming up and, you know, why we thought it was such an important thing. Yeah. So the one of the main things I remember, you know, our first couple of conversations and I was like, wow, this is a perfect room um, because, number one, the, the 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 women of the trust are at a certain level so that they've, they've achieved a certain level of success in their business already. And what my corporate clients are looking for is they are looking for 
you know, diverse businesses, minorities, women, um, service disabled veterans, and others, people with disabilities that have a track record. So I, the light bulb went off for me immediately. And I thought, wow, there is, a, there is a market. Um, so I think this is, this continues to be an amazing idea. I think, pe- I think the one thing that people need to know about corporate, it's, you know, it's, it's a long game, you know, um, it's an investment. But one that really pays off. I'm looking forward to the meeting that we have coming up um, because I have had great interactions with the women that are part of the group. They're supporting each other. Um, and our our vision is collective because the other thing about corporate, I, I tell people it's like jumping into the ocean. Um, what better way to prepare for that but but by working with other women? Um, working with other groups. So when I am now looking at projects that are coming my way, I'm able to contribute and share, share them with the other, um, women that are in the group. Yeah. And I'm actually partnering with, uh, on, on, on projects that I do not even have expertise in. <laughs> okay. Um, I am partnering with, um, one, one woman on a very large marketing, um, opportunity. And we're doing it because the piece of the, the opportunity that I can do, like I'm great at project management. I'm great at certain, certain things. So I think that's the other magic about it. It's, it's looking at opportunities, not for me, but for we, mm-hmm. you know, how can we grow? How can we support each other? Um, in going after some of these. Um, opportunities. Yeah. It's, it's, um, it's something that I, when we came up with the idea, I was like, so on it because I'm like, this kind of, it, it exemplifies why I wanted to create the trust and these women collaborating and working together. And, you know, it, it's how business has been done for a long time, but it's newer for us to literally trust each other, to pull each other in on deals, to have access to these kinds of opportunities. We're so used to doing things alone why not pull each other in? And Jean, thank you for being just such a great example of that and sharing with these women how to think differently. Because we've all been the lone wolves, you know. We've all kind of done this ourselves, you know, with the rare exception. I mean, most of us were like, I'm done with this. I'm going to go start my own business. Watch me go. And then here we are. And I had uh, a new member actually describe the room saying, it's like a bunch of lone wolves coming together. <laughs> great. <laughs> I'm like, I love that. Cause I have always been a little, out, you know, I've always been a little alone. Uh-huh. Um, and then this just takes it to a whole new level. Like, okay, let's go get these deals together. Let's pull together the women we love and know they're, they, oh, she's great at this. And she has a company of team of people that does this and pull them in and go get these deals. And that's the exciting thing for me. Um, well, let me tell yeah, you something. Please. Um, I just want to say, look, that's how the big boys do it. And let's be clear. There is not one project. If you look at any large infrastructure project, there's no one guy or gal sitting around going, Oh, wow. How can I handle this? They've, they, well, before these opportunities even come in the pipeline, they're sitting in rooms talking about, okay, what do we need to make sure that we're in position mm. to, to go after some of these opportunities? And so that's venture capital. That's people. And it takes time to curate these relationships. And so that's why I'm very proud of what you and I are doing because we're curating relationships for the long term so that as opportunities come into the pipeline, whether it's from me, you, or one of the members, we can share it with the group. And we, as we continue to evolve, we're going to get better and better. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's game changer. Yeah. Tell us something we don't know about Eugene. Tell us something interesting. Um. All right. Um, you know, I always, I would always say that, you know, what people didn't know about me was that I would, that I had a very strong passion for health and wellness, but I think that cat's out of the bag. I actually didn't, I don't think I knew that um, about the nutrition certification, actually. I don't think, maybe yeah. you mentioned it once a long time ago, but I totally forgot that. Yeah. yeah. It, well, it's not something that I talk, talk much to people about because again, my corporate brain was like, nobody's ever going to be interested in this. And now I found a way to integrate it into everything that I'm doing. Because it is the foundation, yeah, um, of my, yeah, I love um, that. things that people might not know about me. I'm the oldest of five kids. Um, my parents are both immigrants. My father's from Haiti. My mom's from Denmark. Um, so, yeah. So who do you get? My dog lover. Where do you get the height from? My dad. Yeah. Okay. My dad was six four, 
Um, my mom's tall too, but I definitely, um, you know, I definitely, if you, if you, uh, another funny thing that, you know, that people might not know about, it, but my dad and I had the same first and last name, um, until, you know, I married, I got married. So my dad's name was Jean. My name's Jean. Oh. Right? And, uh, yeah, we had the first, uh, same first and last. So you're like Jean Jr. Or, yeah, basically. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, I'm going to be seeing you in like two weeks in Naples. I'm so excited. It's going to be a great meeting. Yeah. Um, I've not been to Naples I, before. Have you? No, I haven't. But I started looking online. What a beautiful, beautiful resort. What a nice area. There's so much to do there. Um, you know, so I actually extended my stay. I'll be there for awesome. a week um, because it's just going to be. It's a nice place. Yeah. I, I've heard so much about it that I said, why don't we try it for this meeting? And I can't wait. So I will see you there. I'll see all the women of the trust there. I'll see our corporate collective members there. And um, Jean, what is the reward for you in all of this? So the reward for me, because I think, you know, we've all achieved, you know, it's it's not about the business for me. It's really about the impact that that we're having on other women. It's about making successful connections. That is that is a huge reward for me when I'm able to say, oh, I, I spoke to a woman the other day who I'd been working with for many years and she called me and she said, you know what, Jean, um, I, as a result of our work together, I was able to sell my business. You know, like she had an exit strategy. So that is my reward. When I heard from her, I literally burst it into tears. Oh. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because it it's 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 very rewarding to be able to help others achieve their personal and professional goals. Yeah, I love it. Jean, thank you so much for contributing uh, everything you do to the trust. And it's been so amazing getting to know you. Where can people learn more about your company and where to follow you? Yeah, so the best place is to go to my website, which is JKA Solutions. You can find all kinds of information about events we have going on, what we're doing, um, I also have, you know, a lot of free content there in terms of blog posts and otherwise I'm also on LinkedIn. LinkedIn is also my new, my new favorite happy place. So I'm connecting with a lot of folks on LinkedIn. So if you're looking for me, it's Jean Christensen, easy to find. Perfect. All right. Thanks. And I'll see you in Florida. Thanks. I'm looking forward. Bye. I hope you enjoyed that conversation as much as I did. Subscribe now to the Reward Podcast to be sure to not miss an episode. And don't forget to visit jointhetrust.org to learn more about our modern community for forward-thinking seven- and eight-figure women entrepreneurs. You can learn more, apply to join us, or refer another woman you know who is over the million-dollar mark and is ready for a different type of women's network. We have events coming up both live and online that are truly creating new possibilities for female leaders. That's jointhetrust.org. See you there.